The creature I once saw with my family at age 18. This happened somewhere in the crossroads in Mexico. So nearby the area, around approximately one hour car distance, there is an airport. And my father, brother, and I were to pick up some family that came from US to spend the Christmas with us back in 2012. We are from Macogan, so even the road to that border between us and Guana Junto took us a while to reach. The reason why they chose that airport was because one of our cousins had family as well in that area. So the plan was to come by that rancho of their family for a quick talk and some good time. After that, it started getting dark, like real dark and light. Since we were in a rancho, now far away from any other big roads, we got to see through some fields, and everything was laughs and chatting about the good old times in the car. All we can see in the front of the car was mud, and a nearly invisible road track. Left and right, nothing else to see but trees and brush. We saw something down the road, on the right side of the brush, behind a little pile of mud. It was something white but dirty. It looked kind of like a head down the road looking at us. The eyes shined because of the light of the car. Something similar to what happens when you put a light in front of a cat at night. So my father slowly started driving slowly and pointed that for everyone in the car. So all of us now with my cousins that were chatting in the back turned our attention towards it. Then it, it started walking crossing the road. It was nasty, fat, and had limbs like a crocodile. It was walking at floor level. It wasn't that long, but it had a nasty long and fat tail. It moved fast, and once it reached the other side of the road and hid, all we could see was a bit of its tail. My father was still driving, and once we reached the part of the road where it hid, my father drove even faster. He said he felt insecure once we reached that part. After we got out of the field and reached the main road, we stopped in an Elkso store like 7-Eleven in Mexico and just talked about it. It wasn't like anything we've ever seen before. The reason I'm posting about it now is because back in the day, I didn't have a Reddit account and really not felt like I could post it anywhere else because I was afraid about people calling me uh, and my family rude things, you know, because we're Mexican. Anyways, now just started getting active in Reddit. Also, I just read another post on here about a similar creature as well. The Little Girl I'm a little afraid of being judged, so I'm using my throwaway. I'm hoping this sub is a safe place to tell my story. It's long, so bear with me. So, my sister bought a house at least two years ago. I used to stay in her guest room all the time, and I could never sleep because I would constantly see a little girl staring at me. I thought it was my overactive imagination I've also always seen and heard people who aren't there. I always assumed it was my anxiety or just sleep deprivation. One night, on a weekend, my mom stayed at my sister's house too. We shared the guest room. That morning, my mom asked me if I'd ever seen a little girl while I was trying to fall asleep. She said that she had seen one, and when she described her, it sounded exactly like what I always saw. It was pretty nice to know I wasn't crazy. Fast forward a bit. My niece is born and sleeps right next to that guest room. She isn't sleeping. And my mom and I wondered if maybe she was seeing the little girl too. We tell my sister about what we've seen. And my sister tells us that she often hears giggling or crying coming from the guest room. She's visibly uneasy and started wondering if her house could be haunted. Fast forward again to early this summer when my sister's second child is born. He isn't sleeping well either, and our daughter, who is now a toddler, still isn't doing well at bedtime. I no longer sleep in the guest room because her in-laws moved in. I do, however, sleep in the basement, which has become far more terrifying to me. And we'll get to that. My sister is very upset and asks me if I still see the girl. I tell her that I do, 
and now I also hear the crying and giggling. My sister says out loud something along the lines of, please go away, or this isn't your house. Now, I don't quite remember, but she basically asked her to leave. That night, when I slept in the basement, I heard crying. It sounded like it was outside of the house. I fell asleep and had another dream, but this little girl spoke to me. She told me she didn't want to go because my sister re reminded her of her mother. I told her that I was sorry, but my sister wasn't her mom and that she needed to move on. I figured this was all made up in my head. The girl my mom and I saw had pale skin and long dark hair like my sister and I did. There's no activity for a month or so. My cousin who lives nearby comes to visit and apparently tells my sister that her roommate's child keeps talking to no one. When they ask him what he's doing, he says, I'm playing with this little girl. So that was a little chilling. Now, we get to just two weeks ago. My finals were over and I decided to stay with my sister to help her prepare for Christmas. Every morning, my niece, two but closer to three years old, comes downstairs and wakes me up. Usually she wants to watch Jake and the Neverland Pirates right away, but I always insist that we need breakfast before we can watch any type of TV or do any of those extracurricular activities, you know? So true to that routine, one morning she wakes me up and is her usual horribly adorable self. We start up the stairs to go to the kitchen and she stops in the middle of the steps. At that moment, she points out the steps and clear as a bell says. I think her mom died here. So, um, naturally, that was unsettling. She shouldn't have any idea what death is. And just the sentence in general, it wasn't her words. It was creepy, and I could tell. I tried to think that I'd heard her wrong or something like that. I took her upstairs and asked her to tell my sister what she told me. It was even clearer this time. Her mom died here. Mom died! Me and my sister were very disturbed. We wondered if maybe this had anything to do with the little girl. Even if we hadn't heard anything from her since the summertime. I told my mom because like I said, it was disturbing. She said she would talk to her relative. Let's call her Julie. Julie is a medium, if you can believe that. She has proven this numerous times, I'm not going to force you to believe in mediums, but keep an open mind for the duration of the story. My mom calls her up and asks if there's any activity in my sister's house. Julie describes the exact same little girl my mom and I saw. She says that her mom looks a lot like my sister and cousin. The little girl once lived in my sister's house, and here is the worst part. She starts describing the staircase to my mom. She says it has brown carpets, and for some reason, it's split in the middle. Mom corrects her and says there isn't a slit. Julie thinks harder and goes, oh, I get it. She's showing me that it's split, because her mom fell and broke her neck in the middle of the stairs. We never told her what my niece said. She's never been to the house, and yet somehow... We all were talking about the same girl. Me and Julie both knew that the girl's mom looked like our relatives, and now Julie told me that a woman died on the exact step that my niece stopped me and said, I think her mom died here. <laughs> I visited again on Christmas Day, and the girl's presence was gone. I really hope she moved on, but really freaky shit. Especially when you consider that it seems as if I really did communicate with her. The Necklace and the Nosebleed Hey everyone, first timer here. Thought I would share a few experiences I had. First story is the necklace. This happened a few years back. It was around Christmas time, and my sister and I were thinking of gifts to get my parents. We were at the mall and made one of those heart necklaces that split into two. The first one we wrote mom and I believe my sister's name and birthday. The second was dad, and my name 
with my birthday, or vice versa. I don't remember anymore now, and it was too long ago. Anyways, we got them a few weeks before Christmas, and they both came with their separate boxes. I have a little dresser and nightstand next to my bed, so I left both in the top drawer, boxes both closed, and never took them back out anymore. Now, what happened was quite strange. A few days later, I was getting up for class. My sister was already gone at school. Both parents had left to work, so just me in the house. Now inside my room, I have a mirror a foot away from my dresser. In my room, so I use to fix my hair the first thing in the morning, you know, to look good. And as usual, I went over to fix my hair, came back to grab my phone, and at that point, I froze. The necklace with my name on it was on top of the dresser lid open. I kept thinking back at the night before. <laughs> Did I leave it out on the dresser? Did someone go through my stuff and leave it there? There was absolutely no way. I didn't open the dresser at all for anything. And why would I leave it out on top like that for my parents to see, just in case if they walked into my room to ruin the surprise? Now, I had absolutely no explanation for this, or that why I would do that. So, I just put the lid back on, and put it back in my dresser. Nothing else happened to the necklace after that, but to this day, I still think back and it gets really freaked out. The second story is the nosebleed. I think it happened a few years after the first story. Now, I, I tend to get nosebleeds every once in a while either from not keeping hydrated or the change in the weather, or going to different places like taking a flight to go to a different country or a different state or stuff like that. So they usually last quite a while, about 15 minutes or so. If I keep my head tilted and just don't move, should be okay. Well, a few days prior to this incident, my dog was sleeping on my bed and about 6 a.m. I hear him growling under his breath. Like that little growl dogs do, when they want to bark, but don't, kind of like a warning sign to somebody, in case there's like a danger ahead, or something they're intimidated by. So I look at him, and he is staring at the corner of my bedroom, right above me, and for some reason, would not look away. I push him, he looks at me, but continues to look back up at the corner and do his growl. Once in a while, he did a little bark. At one point, he kind of just sat up and sniffed like when he sniffs a stranger's hand, and then kind of laid back down and continued growling. I have this on video, by the way. I look up at the corner and see nothing. I look back at him, and he's just staring at whatever this was, and would not let up. At this point, I was tired and somehow fell back asleep, thinking this ghost or spirit clearly isn't doing us any harm. By the time I woke up, my dog was asleep, so... I guess nothing else happened, and I just forgot about it. Anyways, back to the nosebleed story. My now ex-girlfriend was over at my house, and we were getting ready for work. We were kissing a bit while getting ready. All of a sudden, I'm thinking, why do I feel like something is dripping on my face and on her face? From the corner of my eye, I see red. I stop, she stops, and we look down. There is blood all over my face, so I'm thinking, shit, I got a nosebleed. I run into the bathroom, she follows me, and she has blood on her face, and it's dripping all down her neck as well. She asks me if I got a nosebleed, I check, and I... I don't. Now, I don't know, there was no blood up my nose. No blood anywhere, except my face. No cuts, or anything else like that. Eventually, she cleans up as well. And she didn't have a nosebleed either. She, we, we, we confirmed that. <sighs> Anyways, from the moment I felt the dripping, it, it couldn't have been more than five seconds at most. And then another 10 seconds to get to the bathroom. There was no way in hell my nosebleed or her nosebleed, I mean, logically, could have stopped in such a short amount of time. Because like I said, they normally last at least 15 minutes and only go away if I sit there silently and wait with my head tilted. Eventually, we look at each other and can't seem to figure out what the hell happened and most especially and scary, where the blood had come from. But, and in conclusion, 
We just got ready and raced to work, not wanting to be in my room anymore. Now, it's been a few years since these instances occurred, and I don't remember if anything else happened after that. Still really scares me thinking back, though, considering I still sleep in that same room today. <laughs>